Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and welcome to the next exciting chapter in the ongoing Game Engines by Language series. Like a series that started completely by accident and just keeps going and going and going, and today we are going into the realm of Python. This was actually one of those areas where I didn't think I could do enough to make a list, and I had so many requests for it. I got a couple emails about this, it's like, do Python, do Python, do Python, that I looked into it a little bit more, and yeah, I found enough to make a list. So without further ado, let's jump in, and what we're looking at today is Game Engines or Frameworks or libraries, we're stretching it a bit here, that run on the Python programming language. It doesn't mean they're written in Python, it means that you can write your game's logic using the Python language. So let's jump right in. Now first I should remind you I've already done one of these for JavaScript, C++, Lua, Hacks, and C Sharp. Of course there will be a text version of this up as well for Python. So um, if you want all the links I mentioned, they will be in the links down below. And if you're looking at finding a game engine for one of those languages I just mentioned, do be sure to check those. Those will be linked down below as well. So without further ado, let's get into the Python libraries frameworks for game development. And the first one, is Pygame. Now I gotta kind of apologize, it's not gonna be the most exciting video because a lot of these websites are a little eh, simple. Uh, Pygame is a kind of a beginner focused code oriented media framework. It's built on top of um, SDL library uh, used to make games. One of the downsides is it's kind of slowish, uh, but this is probably the introductory library for Python game development. Very similar to it is Piglet. Piglet. Piglet, I assume. Uh, same thing, cross-platform windowing and multimedia library for Python uh, for developing games and visually rich applications. No external dependencies is nice. Uh, take advantage of multi-monitors, Windows desktops, load images, sounds, videos. Sort of, again, a lot like Pygame. I think this one's a little bit quicker. Um, it's BSD open source licensed. Uh, next up we have Arcade. Again, in the very similar vein, it is a uh, game development system. You, you basically... Uh, for drawing, media, etc., using the Python programming language. So those three, Piglet, um, Arcade, and Pygame, all with very similar code-based frameworks for creating um, games using Python. All very similar, I guess, to Love, the Lua-based library. All right, next up, we have RenPy. Now, RenPy is where we start to get different. RenPy is a visual novel system that you program using Python. So if you're trying to create an interactive story type game, RenPy might be the right one for you. Uh, it is both open source and free to use. You can find several games made by RenPy on itch.io by clicking this link right here or the full list of RenPy games right here. Um, so let's move on from there. We got Cocos 2D. Now Cocos 2D is confusing in this day and age because Coco started life way, way back uh, as a Python library, actually. It's a 2D game framework. Uh, it was eventually ported to C++ in the form of Cocos 2DX, which in turn was uh, ported to you name it, there's a port for it. Well, Cocos 2D is the OG. Now the downside here is I don't see any updates since August of 24. So I'm not 100% positive people are still working with this, but this is kind of similar. It's a higher level, more game focused framework than all the ones we've seen so far. Um, so you get a more complex scene graph, uh, scene transitions, tile map support, that kind of stuff. Some things that might not be present in some of those other frameworks we talked about. Um, so yeah, definitely consider checking out Cocos 2D. It is an open source project and it has been around forever. Uh, next up, we're moving into the 3D land and there's Panda 3D. Now I did a video on Panda 3D. Click the learn more link beside it to, to read that. Panda is pretty sweet. It's a um, it's C++ behind the scenes. It's written in uh, collaboration between Disney and Carnegie Mellon, uh, used for basically creating video games for Disney online, such as Pirates of the Caribbean and Toy Town. Something like that might have that name slightly off, but it's been used to make um, a bunch of uh, MMOs people have actually heard of. Uh, fully open source, the code can be either written in Python or C++. It's well documented, plus there is a, like a brand new renderer option out there that modernizes the look. Again, I covered it in my others video talking about Panda 3D. So if you're interested in a 3D game engine that uses the Python language, Panda 3D is almost a complete no-brainer. Next up, we have Blender Game Engine with an asterisk. Blender Game Engine 2.79 and earlier had a complete Blender Game Engine experience. You could use uh, Python for scripting or use the Visual Block Logic System. But 
Um, they killed it off. Click to learn more to learn more about that. But basically, in 2.8, the next version of Blender, there is going to be no more Blender game engine. Now, they're going to add some of this functionality back in in the form of Blender Interactive, whatever that ends up taking. Uh, but Blender, the actual game engine, has been removed out. Uh, now, if you are looking for a game engine that runs inside of Blender still, there is Armory. Uh, check the hacks video for that. It uses a different programming language. Uh, but also, if you are a big-time BGE fan, there is UPBGE, which is a fork of Blender 2.79, Blender game engine taken in its own direction, will continue to develop past Blender 2.8's release. So if you want to continue using Blender game engine and Python inside of Blender, uh, UPBGE is your best bet there. Um, also click the learn more link. I did a video about UPBGE recently as well. Now we're kind of moving well beyond the world of frameworks we're basically getting into bindings at this point these are basically existing frameworks that have python bindings available for them but they're first class bindings why so i decided to include them and a lot of the frameworks we actually already saw early on actually depend on bindings to provide what they do a lot of them are built over top of sdl etc one of the first bindings is ogre now ogre is a 3d c plus plus based uh renderer and uh, there is a uh Pi Ogre port of it, a first class citizen, should be well supported. Uh, allows you to develop 3D titles using Ogre, but with the Python programming language. It's well documented. Uh, next up, we have Pi SFML2. This is a port of, um, or sorry, bindings for the SFML framework, a C++ game engine or game framework for 2D games. There's also Pi SDL. This is the bindings for the SDL C++ or C-based um, media library. And finally, there is Allegro. Now, Allegro actually, is, it's bindings as well, but they actually ship uh, and distribute with uh, Allegro itself. So Allegro has a Python folder underneath it with the Python bindings as part of the main distribution. And that is it, with one exception, and that is Godot. Now, I really kind of hummed and hawed about including Godot. Godot does not include Python support, period. But I thought I should mention it because GDScript, the programming language used inside of Godot, is heavily based on Python. So it's not Python, but if you are a Python developer, you will find GDScript immediately comfortable. Now you can't use Python language bindings, unfortunately. Um, so you couldn't use Python libraries, that kind of stuff with Godot. But if you want to use a syntax that you are comfortable with in a way that you are familiar with, GDScript might be worth checking out for you. On that topic also, I believe there is a third party set of bindings for um, the Unreal Engine. And Unity used to support a language called Boo, which was very Python-esque, but sadly, it was removed. And to the best of my knowledge, that is it. That is the big players, at least. If you want to do game development using the Python programming language, those are your options. Now, if you want to do a 3D game, um, I'd say Panda 3D is almost a no-brainer. Do be sure to check out that video. And in the 2D space, you are actually almost spoiled for choice. One problem is you're going to probably start struggling with some of the performance issues. And that's why I think uh, Python isn't as popular as it could have been in this space and why a lot of people move towards Lua. There's a lot less lower, lot lower overhead. You can create more performant games as a result. But you've got a plethora of options to check out if you are interested in Python development. And hopefully you learned something today. If you, are you a Python developer or using any of these frameworks? If so, what would you recommend? If not any of these you're considering checking out, let me know. Comments down below. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.